Okay. Now, I want to go over equations. You guys are doing a very nice job. You really are. I, and you need to know that when you are correcting that homework, you're listening and you're focused and you're asking questions. And that's what learning is about. Okay? Um, anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the properties of equalities today. Now, before we do that, I want to point some things out to you, okay? Because sometimes teachers never take the time to say these things to kids. And you have to discover them on your own, okay? So anyways, it's kind of like yesterday at the sixth grade meeting, we said sometimes you have to teach students how to be students. Okay, what it means to be a student. Okay, now we just got done with topic one and we concluded it with a test. Okay, and I want to point out that you should be planning long term for the next test. Okay, the next test will be coming up at the end of this topic. All right, so we want to plan in advance what we're going to do. You, as a good student, when you go to college, that is one of the things that you do. You think, okay, when are midterms? When are finals? Open your book up to page 46 and 47. Now, on page 46 and page 47, you will see that it has all of the topics for this unit, won't you? Okay, it has all the topics for this unit. There are nine topics to be covered. Okay, there's nine topics to be covered. We are supposed to teach according to our curriculum. Mrs. Helsley and I are supposed to cover one topic per day. Yes, one per day is what we're supposed to cover. That doesn't happen very often. Things, we do other things in between those topics, but our curriculum says that's what we should be doing. And so that means how many days will this unit probably take? Nine or ten. Nine or ten days, yeah. If we skip a day or two of covering a topic, you know that somewhere in another 12 or 11 days, we'll probably be having the topic test, okay, on this so that would be like next week, and then another week, and then probably within the third week, we'll probably be taking a test on this. Okay? Now, the other thing I want you to do is open up to page 78 and 79 now. Look at page 78 and 79. Emmett. What do you see on page 78 and 79? This is the topic to test. This tells you what is going to be important for you when you are done with this topic. Do we take, is this the actual test? No, that's not the actual test. That is a test that we could use. But that's not the one I use. That is very similar to what you will get, though. I don't give you any surprises. I do not do that to students. I let the state of Pennsylvania do that to you with PSSA. I don't believe in doing it to kids. I don't believe in doing it to you. So I let you know exactly what you're going to have to be tested on. Okay? Now, this test... That topic test, you can take it anytime you want. You can sit with whoever you want to take it. You can have a parent help you with it. You could have a brother. You could even stay here in the school and do it. Because we have after school homework help. And you can literally go down into the library. You don't need my permission. You just get a permission slip. You go down there. Open your book and start taking this test. If you don't understand a problem, you can raise your hand. You can go to the math teacher down there and say, I don't get how to do this. Could you explain it to me? 
they'll probably ask you, well, what did your teacher say? And you'll say, well, I haven't got there yet. I'm just getting ready for this test. Okay? You can certainly do that. That is a great way. And then here's the thing. If you take that test before we even do this unit, when we get to the lesson that has those questions, you'll be like, oh, that's what that question was all about. That's what I didn't understand. Now, that's kind of like pre-reading, okay? So you always have that there. The other thing is this, okay? Focus. Pay attention. Read carefully. This is the big one. Mr. Scaletta is pushing this. It's called our liter literacy initiative. Okay, my son at the high school had to do an activity based on this. Every child in general claim is expected to read carefully. It's not just you, it's my son. And he came home and he griped about it. And I said, be quiet, quit complaining, and do what you're supposed to do. That's what I told him. I said, doesn't matter whether you like it or not, you have to do it. And he was like, eh, my dad's a jerk, but that's okay. So the other thing is to check your work. You can always use a calculator. You can always use a calculator to check your work. You can always go to a parent, a brother, a sister. Homework help. You can always go homework help. The other thing is to do your best in other areas of math. Guess what? We may be doing a lab, and the other day you guys all gave me great written responses. And almost everybody got, I think everybody did get A's on that. Don't forget that you get A's and other things in here, all right? That helps your grade, okay? Don't forget that. So, you know, in preparing for a test, you might say to yourself, man, tests are really hard. But I'm going to do really well on everything else, because I can do really well on everything else. And then, you know what? That's gotten me through a lot of college classes. You know, I ended up getting an A in some college courses because I said, I know I'm going to bomb the midterm. I know I am. I'm going to make sure I do everything perfect before that and after that. And then you still get the A at the end of the class or the B or whatever. So I know. I mean, this is something that you guys will be using. So anyways, if a teacher has never helped you to understand those things, this, these are things that students, good students do. And some of you do do this on a regular basis. Okay, you, you do it on a regular basis. So let's turn now to page 50. Let's turn to page 50. Page 50, they have a picture of something. What is on the top of that picture, Abram? A scale. A scale. A pan balance, correct? And what do they show you going into... the pan balance on each side? Cubes. Yes, cubes. How many cubes going into each side? Jason? Two. Two on each side, right? So what do they want to do with this pan balance? They want to keep it what? They want to keep it what, Dana? Yeah, even or balance, right? Even or, another way of saying it is equal. They want to keep it equal. Now here's the thing, how can you keep an equation balanced? Well, what you do on this side, you have to do on that side. That's how you keep things balanced, okay? An equation is a sentence that uses equal sign to show that two expressions have the same value. And the example they give you here is 5 plus 3, and it balances out with 8, doesn't it? Now, is there another way that you could have written 8? Yeah, there's a lot of different ways. And then in the drawing up above the picture, they're adding what to each side of the equation? Scott? Yeah, they're adding two things to each side of the equation. That way it'll stay balanced. And that's all we're talking about is equality. Now, think of an equation as a pan balance. Keep the pan balance as balance, okay? 
The same thing must be done on both sides. Now we have the property of equality, the addition property of equality, and it means to add the same amounts to both sides. Just what we were doing. Not a big mystery, right? You guys understand that, right? Some of you have probably done it in your hands all night. You probably held stuff like this, playing around. You naturally do things like that. Now, if you have it for addition, guess what? You have the same thing but it's with subtraction, okay? Now, which side of the equation has more parts? The right or the left side? Eric? Yeah. yeah, the left side has more parts, but do they still mean the same thing? Yeah, they still mean the same thing. The subtraction property of equality lets you subtract the same amount from both sides. And so look at how they set it up in your book here. What they did was they subtracted 2, they subtracted 2. So now what is the value in each one of those pans, Aiden? You, Aiden. Um, 6. 6, right? How many people saw that? Like, yeah, I understand that. That's not a big deal. Okay, now here's the thing, though. I wish they gave you harder numbers right now, because then Mrs. Helmy wouldn't be back here doing this to her hand. <laughs> because then she'd be like, if we gave you guys harder numbers, and we set it up like this, okay, that is the worst state ever, okay, and we gave you a number that looks something more like that, then you guys would sit up and you'd be like, ooh! You'd be a little more focused. You'd go, oh, I don't get that. Don't worry. It will get a little bit more complicated than that. Okay. Somebody tell me. What was the first property of equality that we learned about? What was the first one that we talked about today? Aiden. Property of addition. Property of addition. Yeah. The addition property of equality. What's the second one, Emmett? The subtraction property of equality. Okay, so we have two of them. Now, you know what? We're going to go on to another operation. What is this one? What is this one, Abram? Multiplication. Multiplication. The property, multiplication of, okay, the multiplication property of equality lets you multiply both sides of the equation, uh, here's the biggie, by the same non-zero amount. Because what would happen if you use zero? What would automatically happen to your pan balance? It would automatically what? Uh, it'd, be it, it'd be evened out because what would go away? Everything. everything would go away, right? If you multiply everything by the zero, it all goes away. All right, so you're done. You're, all right, so they always say the non-zero amount. So again, they take 5 plus 3. What is 5 plus 3? 8. That's 8, right? And then they put an equal sign there, right? What does equal mean, 8? Olivia. What does equal mean? Oh. What? Yeah, I don't know. I know. That's the problem. I don't want to explain. I don't know how to explain equal. I just know that it's equal. What does equal mean? The sum of an addition problem? Yeah, but it could also be the, sum, uh, the difference of a subtraction problem. What does it equal mean? It's the same amount as? Yeah, the same amount as. The same value. So this has got to have the same amount as what's over there. What do I got to put over here to get the same amount? I gotta put eight over there. Now, here's the thing. If I take this and I put parentheses around it, and then I multiply it by four, what would I get as a value? I'd get 32, right? Eight times four is 32. So if I take this and I put four over here, what do I get? 
What do I get? Three. I get 32. Right? Now, all I did was add this times 4 times 4, and I still have, I can take everything right back up to where it was, and it's all going to remain what? Okay, here we go. Somebody tell me. What was the first one, Jason, that we learned? Pro what property of oh, equality? First property? Yeah. Uh, addition. Addition, property of equality. What was the second one? Subtraction. Subtraction. You can subtract on both sides. The third one, Robin? Multiplication. Multiplication, right? Okay, somebody tell me. What is going to be the last <coughs> property of equality that we learn about? Ariana? Ar Arlen? Sorry. Division. Division, right? We're going to divide. Oops, we're going to divide. We're going to fix the smart board. We're going to divide. Okay, so here we go. And it tells you, again, look at this. The division property of equality lets you divide both sides of the equation by the same non-zero amount. Okay, so it's the same thing if we take 5 plus 3, right? And then we, oh, man, oh, man. Why, would my, why must we put parentheses there? Why, 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 Richard? Yes, how many people knew that? You guys had your hands up. You knew that. That's that's huge. That's like discovering like chocolate by mistake. Okay? So there you have it. The parentheses, if I didn't put those parentheses there, then you'd have to do three divided by two, and that's gonna totally crazy things out. So now we take that. Now we're working with that eight. So if I divide it by two on this side, I must do what on that side? Divide it by two. Divide it by two, right? I must divide it by two. Two. And does that give me an equal balance? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. So somebody tell me. What was the first property that we learned? Abram. Addition. The well, the division the addition property of equality, right? What was the second one we learned? The subtraction property of equality. What's the third one, Lexi? The multiplication property of equality. And the fourth one, Colin? The division property of equality? Yes. So we've got all of those covered now. All right? Questions? No questions? Any questions? I don't know what this, yes, Aurora? Okay. Just to make that clear, so like, we could like put any numbers on each side, it just all has to equal up to like the same on each side. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's funny you should ask that question. It's all. It's almost like I know you're going to ask. It's almost like I suspect you're going to say. The properties of equality depend on one important thing, and it's what Aurora said. What you do on one side, you must do on another side. If you don't, it won't be equal. So like when we did that, like you divided up two on one side, you have to divide by two? Like even if you'd like divide by five and you still get the same answer? No, you wouldn't get, it wouldn't work then. It wouldn't be the property then. It, if, if the numbers were different, then it wouldn't, if it was unequal to start with, then you could divide by five and get the same answer. But the, you know, the thing is this, and here, that's a good question. Because if you do this, if you have six plus four, you have ten, right? Mm -hmm. And you do this, and then you have 10. But if you do 6 plus 4 divided by 2, you have to take 10 divided by 2. Okay? But here's that remains equal. If you were to put 5 over here, that's not going to work, is it? No. Now, if you happen to have this number over here, okay? You have this. If you happen to have, I'm trying to think of the number here. Um, if you started out with 20 and you divided it 
okay, by something else, you could then get, but this wouldn't be equal to begin with, would it? No. So you could, you could start with something that's unequal and work your way to getting something that is equal, but then it's not an equality. It doesn't involve the equality property. Say something, say something's not equal. You put, you put a greater or lesser in it. We're going to get to that. See, you guys are ready for more of this. We'll get to that. We'll talk about inequality. We'll talk about inequality and how you deal with it. Robin? Is, um, No. Yes, that does influence it. Your operations. Miss Helming? What if like you had like fifteen and then you did like something to make it ten and then you had like another number and you did something to make it ten, but it wasn't like the same like, like they weren't the same numbers on each side. Wait, then if, it, they were, it, if they were if they were but you did like you did this one with subtraction key. and you did one with division. This is the key. This is the key. Here's the key, gang. The key is the equal symbol, right? The equal symbol means that whatever you start with, no matter what combination, okay? So that would equal what? 4 plus 5 plus 3 equals 12. Whatever you start with, if it says equal here, then these values must be the same, or none of the equality properties will work. Okay, because you have to start with two things that are equal. Because then, if they don't, if they're not equal, then you would have to say no, it doesn't work. No, I mean like if you did like subtraction and division, but it's still like these. these no, things. no. If you subtracted two from this side. And no, then divide say it some, the number was 10. You subtracted 5 from the 1, and then you divided by 2 on the other. No, you're talking about keeping the operations the same. No, that won't work. It, that won't work if you mix operations. It won't work. See, that was my question. Okay, yeah, you can't mix operations when you're talking about them. Okay, now you can't mix operations when we talk about inequalities, but we're talking about equality. Now, Let's go over a few things right now. This will help you understand it, okay? Take a look at this, these other examples that they have in your book, okay? The first one talks about if you, now here's the tricky part. If 12 plus 18 equals 30, that's the first thing you have to worry about, okay? Then it has the word does, and then it says does Here's a separate problem. 12 plus 18 plus 5 equals 30 plus 5. Now, why or why not? Is that true? Is that true? Yes or no? Yes. Well, you certainly have the 5 added to each side, so this is what it looks like. Okay? They start out with 12 plus 18. What is 12 plus 18? Not 21. 30. 12 plus 18 equals 30, okay? It's getting a little complicated, isn't it? All right? So we can say that it equals 30. That's a true sentence, isn't it? That's true. Now, if you have that, does... So let's give you something totally separate. Okay, keep that by itself because the word does is going to separate your next problem, okay? So they're going to say, well, I'm curious, Mr. Triola. What if I take 12 plus 18 and I add 5 to it? Then what do I end up with? Victoria? Mm, I, if, if 12 plus 18 equals 30, and then I take 12 plus 18 and I add 5 more to it, what do you end up with? 35. I end up with 35. So this is 35, isn't it? Because all I did was add a 5 to it, huh? That's all I did. I just added a 5 to it. Now, my question is this. What if I take 30 and I add 5 to it? What do I get? 35. I get 35, don't I? Mm -hmm. So does... 
adding five to all of this, does adding five to all that equal give you a balance? Yeah. It gives you a balance. Even though you started with these numbers, you can add five to both sides because what you started with was balance, right? These were balance, right? And all you did was add five to it. Okay, so they're balanced. Now, I want to show you another example, okay? Let me show you another example. This is the one where some of us were thinking, what the heck? Look at this example. Okay? We have, if 4x equals 20. 4x, what does 4x mean? Scott? 4 times some number. 4 times some number. Do we know... Do we have to even know what x is? No. Do we know what x is? Yeah. No. We can, yeah, we can figure it out because whatever we multiply 4x by, whatever we multiply 4 by, it has to equal 20. So what must x be, Emmett? Must be 5, huh? Must be 5. So we know that this works, doesn't it? No matter where I put it, it works, right? Wherever I put it, it works. Okay? So, now my question is this. Does, now notice the word does, does 4x divided by some number, is it going to equal 20 divided by some number? Well, does 4x, 4x equals 20, right? We know that 4x equals 20. We just, but well, we're going to divide 4x by some number and 20 by some number. Can it be equal, Victoria? It can, right? Caden's shaking his head saying, yeah, it can be equal because watch. If I divide by 5 and I divide this side by 4, is that equal? That's not equal, is it? What would I have to put over here to get it to be equal? Minus. No, not minus. What is the Abram? Five. We need to put 5 over there. Now, in that case, it does balance, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But, you know what? In some cases, look at this. No. Both sides of the equation are not divided by the same number. You're going to end up with trouble, aren't you? So if you start mixing up the numbers that you use, your equality properties won't work. Okay. Take out your... No, we're all right. You tell me. Here's a question. <coughs> If 23 plus 37 equals 60, okay, does 23 plus 37 plus another 9 equal 60 plus 9? Why or why not? Why or why not? Explain it to the person beside you. It, it will balance. It will be balanced. It will balance, but it's not this problem. It doesn't have to be that. Well, you're right. You're right in that it works, but you're wrong that it's not this problem. Yeah, but does it Yes. If you if it says equal on it, it has to be equal. Okay. Now, here we go. Tell me, does this? If you have 23 plus 37 equals 60, does 23 plus 37 plus 9 equals 60 plus 9? Yes. How many people agree with that? Yeah, it does because the amount 
the same amount has been added to each side. How about this one? If 7m equals 63, does 7m minus 9 equal 63 minus 9? Ask your partner. What do you say? What say you, eh, Colin? Colin says yes. How many people agree yes? Yeah. You know what? And here's why. Because the same amount has been subtracted from each side. So you've taken 9 away from 7m, and you've taken 9 away from 63. So it's got to stay balanced. How about this one? How about this crazy one? Tell your partner. See if you and your partner have to What do you think? Nicely done. Very good, Katie. No, because you know what? 28 divided by 28 gives you 1. And you're not dividing by 28. On this one, you're dividing by 7, aren't you? So in other words, no, because each side of the question has been divided by a different amount. It can't possibly be the same, can it? All right, can't be the same. You guys are doing really well with this confusing stuff. You're through it. Here's the key. Take the time to read carefully, all right? And feel, always, always do the math. You know, do 35 minus 7 and see if it really, truly does equal to 28, okay? Take the time to get out a calculator and play with those numbers. Here comes your homework. What we just did that you guys and your partners talked about is what you're going to do a lot of on your homework. <laughs> Okay, if you want, gang, you can get started. Now, here's what I'm going to let you do. Put your pencil down and look up here for a minute. We have about three minutes left in this block. Okay, block four, block two's over at, uh, block three's over at 101. So we have about three minutes left. Look at me. You may begin your math homework. Or you may give your brain a rest. Your brain does need a rest from some of this. It does. You've just sat there, and when you give it a rest, you digest it. You are not allowed to play on your iPad. If you need to give your brain a rest from this, you may read a book only, or you may do your homework. You may read a book, or you may do your homework. The reading will allow you to clear your head. Then when you sit down to do your homework, your head will be fresh and ready to go, and what we learned today you will probably remember better. So you may not use your iPad for anything unless you're doing your homework and you're using the calculator. No games.
the electronic gains is not going to rest your brain. No, you have one or choice or the other. Yes. 